Well, good day. Welcome to another episode of Frosty's Projects. I am your host, Frosty, and today we're going to be installing a K&N cold air intake on my 2001 Ford Expedition. Uh, K&N advertises guaranteed horsepower and torque. Uh, according to the website, it's 10 horsepower and 15 foot-pounds of torque. That doesn't sound like much, but uh, I had virtually this identical product just one step down on my 98 Expedition, and I loved it. Uh, those numbers don't sound real big, but the 5.4 Triton isn't exactly a powerhouse. It's a decent motor for a full-size SUV, but it made even the 10 horsepower and 15 foot-pounds of torque, if that's what it really is, was a noticeable difference. And, uh, and I really like the intake. I don't remember if I had any specific effect on my mileage, plus or minus. Uh, once I get this on, I'll do some driving and I'll add some, uh, some more information in the description below if I actually do notice some mileage differences. So this is a really basic installation. Like I said, I had basically the same product on my old uh, 98. Um, it's so basic, in fact, that it hardly warrants uh, a video. It's, I mean, you literally take the old off and the old not and put the, the new one on. It's a couple of hose clamps, except for it reutilizes the mass airflow sensor from the old intake into the new one, and that has to be relocated into the K&N system. And that takes a little bit more time and uh, is, is worthy of uh, having a video for it. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this unpacked. We'll get it laid out. I'll show you what uh, we have under the hood, what we're going to be replacing it with, and we'll get some wrenches bending. All right, so here we are underneath the hood of my uh, 2001 Ford Expedition. This, of course, is the Triton 5.4 liter V8. Uh, the applicability for this K&N intake system, cold air intake, is 97 to 2004 Ford Expeditions, which are all 5.4 liter V8s. It also is the same year range for Ford F-150 pickup trucks. Now the F-150s could have a V6, this will not work on those, or you could have the 5.4 or even the 4.6 liter V8. This intake system we're putting on will work on both different sizes uh, V8s. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing this entire in intake system from about here all the way to where it plugs into the fender. And we're going to be replacing it with a new cold air intake system. And I have that laid out over here. We'll look at that in a second. So what's important to remember is this is the old filter. You can see it has a pretty decent size. This is the new filter. And although it's quite a bit bigger, that alone isn't going to make the difference that we're looking for because the choke point for getting air getting air into the engine is where you get your power the choke point is right down here where this little tiny tube plugs into the fender that's where it has to get all its air it doesn't matter how big the filter is this is our choke point and the cold air intake is going to get rid of that choke point and instead of trying to get air through this that's only coming from this little tiny hole and it's going to come through it's going to come through let me see that bills here. It's going to come un unobstructed into this larger filter. So you no longer have a choke point of where your air is coming from. Yeah. That's the concept of the whole thing. More no, air no, no. equals more fuel. Yeah. More fuel is more. That's right. That's right. Okay, so here you can see all the components that came with the K&N uh, cold air filter uh, intake system. Uh, here's the filter. We just looked at that. It comes with all the hoses, all the fasteners, all the hose clamps everything you're going to need for this entire project. Can in is a quality product. It comes with everything you need right down to the fasteners. So this is a really complete kit. One of the main things that's different between this one and the one that I had on my old 98 is my old one had a plastic tube here instead of this aluminum piece and it didn't have this heat shield. That's the, uh, the upgrade or those two uh, pieces. This one largely cosmetic and this one uh, will keep the heat away from the, in the heat of the engine away from the intake. Uh, to make sure you continue to get predominantly cold air in your motor. Cold air is denser and it is more efficient in the combustion process once it gets into the motor. All right, let's start taking something apart. Now I said earlier that this reuses the mass airflow sensor, which it does. It's down underneath here. This one also, and I forgot, uh, reuses the uh, air temperature sensor, which is here. So we'll get it unplugged. OK, 
Okay, we'll unclamp where the air filter goes. I already took the air filter out for that demonstration earlier, so it's not in here. It would normally reside right inside here. This is pushed into two rubber grommets, and that comes out. And again, that's your choke point. This whole motor has to get all of its air through that little hole. That's your choke point. And underneath that is this connector. And this wiring harness is clipped to this mounting bracket. Carefully remove it and get it disconnected. There we go. This is where your air flow, air mass flow sensor is in here, and that's one of the components we're going to have to switch over uh, into the new air intake system. Okay, and here we have the air temperature sensor, and this is just plugged in. And should come right out. Might need a little bit of persuasion. And there we go. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and remove the, the stock mass airflow sensor, which is inside of this assembly. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it extends into this tube right there, connected to this wire harness. And I don't remember this for my 98. This looks remarkably aftermarket, like one of those guys that you you see on the internet or on some infomercial. Twenty five ninety five, and it'll it'll improve you by two hundred horsepower or whatever outrageous claim they make. Uh, I don't remember that from my ninety eight. I think this is probably something that somebody bought aftermarket and put in. It's going to be unnecessary with a new system. So we remove this boot. We get it pulled back to expose the wires. Take a flat screwdriver, and we're going to pop these two plastic pieces apart. Okay, take that boot, see if we can turn it around and cram it inside of this to give ourselves a little bit of slack. Like so. Entire assembly out of here. Oh, look at all that dirt. Okay, we'll disconnect this electrical connector like so. I believe we're going to reuse that, so we'll save it off to the side. Okay, and we're going to remove these fasteners to get the mass airflow sensor off. Okay, so here we have the heat shield, which is unique to this particular uh, component. It, this is what I didn't have on my old one. Here's a mass airflow sensor that we just removed from the uh, existing intake system. It gets bolted up right here. I've got a good diagram with the instructions, a very well pictured as far as the orientation of this, because you could put this in in several different directions. Uh, you're going to want to make sure it's in the correct way so the, all the, uh, the wiring harness and all will still reach and connect. So this orientation is with this mounting bracket down. This portion of the mass airflow sensor faces up. We've got a couple gaskets. So the order this is going to go together then is the mass airflow sensor, a gasket to the shield, to another gasket, and then to this ring, which is going to go on the inside here. And they're all bolts together with the provided Allen bolts. And that gasket appeared to be uh, fiber reinforced. It's not just a piece of rubber. So it's fairly hardy, but you don't want to over torque these. Just nice and snug. Too tight, you'll start to compress that rubber and squeeze it out of place. And you'll end up getting air leaks around this, which is the last thing that you need. 
kind of defeats the purpose. All right, we're done in there. I'm going to make sure that that gasket hasn't displaced at all. Try to give you a close up. Make sure that if you look in here where the gasket comes around here, that it hasn't squeezed that gasket in or out. So you've got a good seal all the way around. Here you can clearly see the mass air flow sensor where it pokes it into the tube, into the ductwork, and that part is done. Okay, next up we're going to put this gasket onto the heat shield. It's just got a groove that goes onto the, the sheet metal itself. This should be pretty close to the right length. Knowing k and it should be pretty much right on the money. It may have to be trimmed to length a little bit when we're done, but I anticipate it's going to be pretty much right on. Okay, and so this is about three and a half, four inches too long, so I'm just going to take a pair of snips. You could do it with a knife, except for the fact that the actual attachment groove here has a metal lining in it, so it's a little bit too stiff uh, to cut with just a knife. And now we're going to install what it refers to as the hump hose right here and again it was provided with all the clamps that we need these are all brand new hose clamps for this assembly uh, no and we'll snug that down nice and tight huh? okay so the way that this mounts up is these are the two rubber grommets that that other plastic piece plugged down into and my initial uh, inclination was to remove these grommets you can just slide them off to the side and they come out of the larger size hole so that I could bolt this piece directly down in but according to the instructions it says to bolt it through the existing grommets and I am assuming that that is to provide a little bit of vibration control so it doesn't stress out the, uh, the overall installation. So we're going to bolt this directly on top of these grommets with the provided hardware. Okay, and you'll go through the top. You'll have a washer and a nut that are down on the bottom, and we'll tighten this up. Okay, and so this heat shield is has slotted holes to provide some adjustability back and forth so that when we put in the rest of this tubing, we can get it exactly where we want it. So I'm going to leave that a little bit loose for now so that we can get it adjusted perfectly when we get to the next step of the installation. Okay, next up we're going to take what it refers to as the step hose and we're going to connect it to this intake tube. This is called a step hose because if you look closely, it's larger at this end than it is at the other end. So you want to make sure that you put the larger end onto the intake tube. Make sure you've got a fairly even amount of coverage all the way around. Yeah, came with all new hose clamps. You've got a larger one and a smaller one because this is larger and smaller. So we'll take this it up and we'll snug down this clamp. I always try to do a little bit of thinking ahead when I'm using these clamps and thinking about what direction I'm going to need to be coming at them once this is all installed. So when this is on the truck and this is front of the truck, back of the truck, these, these tubes are going to plug in from the side. I don't want to put this hose clamp on this way because then I won't be able to get it to the bottom to loosen it and retighten it if I need to adjust anything. So I always try to think ahead and make sure that my, my clamps are going to be in an easily accessible position. Okay. Now we're going to take this little rubber grommet that was provided. This is where our air temperature sensor is going to go. So we'll just kind of fold it up and get it in there. You can look from the inside to make sure that it's seated all the way around in that groove. 
We'll take our air temperature sensor and get it plugged in just like that. And this is easy enough to turn in there, even though it's a rubber seal and it's not going to leak. It still is easy enough to turn so I can adjust this to, to line up with the clip once I get to that step. Okay, so here we are. We've got the heat shield and the mass air flow sensor installed, ready to go. We've got this ready and cleaned up. Here's our new tube, which has our step down tube installed. We've got our hose clamps ready and in place. So we'll take this guy, slide it there, this guy, and slide it there. Okay. It's lined up. sure it's fully seated. Hey Daddy, you saw a spider? Yeah, I'm holding. Okay. Wait, so this spider? is installed. I can tell that it's most of, or Wait, far Daddy. enough through that this will Daddy. tighten down nicely. Hey Daddy, what happened to a spider ate me? Oh, a spider's not going to eat you, buddy. What happened to a spider? Or maybe spider man? You might be. Okay, so those are both tightened down. This is that harness for the uh, mass airflow sensor that we had disconnected earlier. We'll get it snapped back into place. And I wonder if this rubber boot is gonna cover that nicely. Yeah, it actually does. Looks a little hinky. It'll help provide a little bit of insulation. You can take this, pass it down underneath. Okay, our connector is way back here. Okay, turn the right direction. Nope. Got it plugged back in and snapped. Okay. Here's our air temperature sensor. Get it turned the right direction. Get it snapped on. Okay. So now that this is all set in where we want it, these we can we've adjusted this in and out where we need it. It does line up with where our screw bolts are. So now we can come in here with a ratchet and snug that down. Now remember, this is into a rubber grommet. These are actually self-locking nuts. So you don't even have to make these super tight. You don't have to worry about them coming loose. You're just going to want to compress this enough that it's not going anywhere, but it still allows those rubber grommets to provide the shock resilience that you need so that you're not vibrating stuff too much and causing this sheet metal to crack. Okay, nice and firm. Okay, now we're down to hooking up these hoses. That would be these two lines right here, which originally plugged into the existing uh, intake system right here. This one sets it forward, looks like about three inches, which is a little interesting because there's a slot in the side of this cover where those need to go through headed towards the intake system. So I could try to run these to the front and get them to line up a little bit better but then it's going to interfere with my cover or I can make these connection hoses a little bit longer and still get these to go down inside of that groove so my cover will go back on the way it's supposed to so I've measured these out this one I still need to cut get these cut to length and we can get the hoses hooked up okay now our hoses are cut to length and we're ready to Slide these together. This is what I've got here that bothers me a little bit because the way I had to route these hoses out of their original alignment, I've got a rub point right there right there 
and one on the back side when this cover goes on. And that the vibration here will wear a hole into this plastic tube very, very quickly. So I'm gonna take some of this extra rubber hose. I'm gonna slice, slice it down one side and split it in half. And I'm gonna put it around that hose to create an insulator between the hose and this metal bracket so that I don't have a wear point that's gonna wear through my hose. Okay, so here's that extra line. You can see I split it down the side like so. I need a short piece for the top here. Because I only have the one rub point. And I'll turn it like so. For the bottom line. So, now when we put our cover on, ah, there we go, I've got a thick layer of rubber between the plastic line and the rub points so I don't wear through the plastic hose. Last step here is going to be install the air filter itself. Okay. And there you have it. We'll get this thing fired up. Make sure I don't get any check engine lights indicating that I improperly installed either the air temperature sensor or the mass airflow sensor. Uh, make sure it runs in idles correctly, which means I don't have any vacuum leaks either from here or back up in here. And it's ready for a test drive. So I just got back from my test drive. I got it up to full operating temperature. Uh, there were no check engine lights. It idled and ran fine, so I don't have any vacuum leaks. Uh, as I remembered, it did have a noticeable amount of extra power, a little bit more under hood noise because of the extra air coming in when you're really on the throttle, you can hear the, the air getting sucked under the hood, which isn't irritating at all, at least not for me, uh, considering the, the trade-off is having the extra power. Um, very straightforward installation, uh, really no, no quirks or surprises with the exception of the alignment of this hose, these two hoses here. Um, and I don't remember with my last installation if that was an issue or not. I said the, uh, my old one had a plastic tube here instead of the aluminum, and I don't know if the alignment was different. It seems to me that my 98, this cover was missing, and so I didn't have to worry about coming through the slot on the back. So maybe it was an issue and I just didn't realize it. I, I honestly don't remember it was too long ago. But the system did come with long enough hoses for here in the middle that I could cut them that extra little bit long so that I could make that little dog leg in there, and it worked out just fine. So all in all, I'm, I'm really pleased with the product. Uh, and I said, I'll update the description below uh, once I've got a few miles underneath it and I put a couple tanks of gas and I can see whether or not I've had a noticeable effect on my mileage. Uh, I expect I'll get maybe slightly better, but it's hard to say. So I hope you found this, uh, this video informative and a little bit helpful if you're putting this intake system on a 5.4 uh, liter Triton motor. It's been a lot of fun. The kids were out here helping me a little bit. I hope everybody has a great blessed day. Don't forget to be a good person, and I'll see you in the next one.